Magic House Flip S16E4 on the Home Food Crime and Ancient Curses Network. The episode opened with the typical montage that included scenes from the previous 15 seasons of the popular home improvement show. Already what was supposed to be a reading has a typo and it has become a, a uh, soft edit. All right. Home improvement show Magic House Flip. A wizard contractor who dropped out of the series in season seven ran by in one video clip wearing a tool belt and holding a broken magic wand. His purple robes were torn and a large red dragon followed him through the kitchen, ripping away appliances and new cabinets with its bulk. That was a um, that was a favorite episode of the audience, if not that wizard. It was, since I'm here anyway, if not of that wizard. All right. This was followed by the sisters high-fiving in a bright remodeled breakfast nook free of dragons, curses, and other whatnot. Um, the next scene in the opening credits showed the sisters fleeing out a front door over the new railing of a wraparound porch as spiky tentacles stretched out, the, out of the door after them. One of the copper gas lanterns ripped free of the brick brickwork beside the front door. Goblins burst out from under a dry rotted deck, wielding crude pig iron swords. The theme song concluded on a scene of the sisters hugging a happy couple in front of a quiet and tastefully painted craftsman-style home. The first scene of the episode itself opened on Artema's kitchen as her sister Morgana entered and joined her for a cup of coffee at the large island in the eat-in kitchen. Uh, Morgana glanced at the camera briefly, as she tended to do even after all these years of being instructed not to. So what's going on? The question sounded pretty natural, but regular viewers knew these scenes were staged. Artema gave a grunt and said, it's Jack this time. He's a precious little boy. How could Jack be any kind of trouble? Artema cut a look at her sister before rolling her eyes. You're one to talk, being the fun ant that always adds to his mischief. I have no idea what you're talking about. Morgana winked at the camera. Well, today he wants a dragon. Morgana clapped her hands. They are very loyal pets if you get one young. We've seen what dragons can do to a house more than once. Morgana waved her sister off and pushed away her cup of coffee. Those are fixer-uppers where the dragons were neglected. Jack will be great with his own dragon, you'll see. No way, Artema shook her head. He doesn't even remember to feed the dog, and a dragon will eat the dog if Jack forgets to feed it. That's terrible. It's the truth. So what are we doing today? We have the foreclosure over on Piedmont. Uh, Morgana's voice got very robotic as she recited off her lines. The couple tried to take it on as a standard flip when they discovered a few curses in the basement and a couple hexes behind the walls. They knew they were in trouble, but thought they could still handle it. Now they are in way over their heads in dark magic and underwater in the house's value. Literally underwater? Morgana frowned. No, just in the economic sense, but it's still bad. Happens every time. Artema shook her head and set down her empty mug. Well, I think we're just the ones to help. The episode cut to them getting into Morgana's van outside. Jack played with his brothers in the distance. Morgana raised her hand and said, Be nice and I'll talk your mother into getting you, getting you that dragon. Uh, the boys cheered loud enough for their voices to carry. Artema waved a fist at her sister and growled, I'll feed you to that dragon. The scene cut to them driving as they discussed the specs of the house. This is a nice neighborhood, Morgana said in a close-up. Uh, good resale value uh, or good for rental options too. Well, if this is it, then this house is the eyesore of the neighborhood. The scene cut to a wide shot of a house with paint peeling and boards falling off the front. Zero curb appeal, Morgana noted as she slammed her driver's side door, more than just landscaping issues. They walked partway up before the camera uh, followed them from room to gutted room. Most of the demo is done, Artemis said, but then pinched her nose. What's that smell, though? I think it's sulfur. Could be a demon. They said, they said nothing about demons. Um, they continued through the house with exposed insulation, incomplete bathrooms, and a dated kitchen. The final shot of this sequence was looking down the dark basement stairs to the sounds of growls. Uh, a dark music cue switched to light jazz with an establishing shot of cafes and artisan businesses in a quaint downtown area. 
The sisters were then shown sitting in a cafe having coffee again, but this time with a young couple. They shared their woes of trying to renovate and flip a house with magic issues. The wife kept saying things about the great lawn and all this wonderful stuff within walking distance. The sisters kept noting the perils of flipping magic houses without proper experience. After... A pause, the husband delivered the key line from every episode. Sisters, we need your magic touch. Morgana covered their budget with them. They always reacted to whatever number was given as if that might be tight, but they remained optimistic. We'll get the engineer and the mediums out to assess the situation, Artemis said to said to end the scene. The sisters went through the house with the contractor from the guild. They waved their wands to lift up stained carpet to show nice hardwood floors. Why would anyone cover those, Morgana said. The bathroom and kitchen redesigns seemed straightforward, if not cheap. They were going to have to check if one of the walls was load-bearing before they could vaporize it in order to create an open concept. A music, The music changed as they entered the basement using their wands to illuminate the dark space. The contractor wizard in this episode had a thick southern accent and wore camo robes under his tool belt of wands. I can already tell you that we have water issues here. We'll need to build a new retaining wall and probably line it with hydrophobic wards for good measure. Maybe even a few drying charms just to be safe. That electrical concerns me, not sure if it is up to code, and we haven't even looked at the pipes to see how old those are. The young apprentice with a mullet under his tall pointy hat took notes on an iPad for his mentor. All of that sounds expensive, Morgana said. The wizard shrugged in response. The apprentice adjusted his hat and waited silently. Artemis sighed and said, I hate spending money where it can't be seen, but we have no choice. That ain't all, the wizard said. A scurrying noise, as if on cue, drew their attention to the ductwork running through the and between the joists. A quick shot showed something that could be a rodent. Rats? Morgana asked. Worse, the wizard said. Uh, a little spark of fire briefly uh, revealed a tiny dragon before it slipped through a wide crack in the concrete. Sewer dragons, Artema whispered. Worse, the wizard said and shook his head. It's pocket dragons. How are pocket dragons worse than sewer dragons, Morgana asked. The contract wizard um, whip, not wiped sweat from his forehead uh, before he answered. Pocket dragons grow bigger in time, but they are a protected species, so we can't exterminate them like the other kind. We have to catch and release. Not every dragon handler is able to do that, and we have to find a certified reserve for them. So hiring out will take almost all your budget. We can't do that, Artemis said. Morgana suggested we could catch them ourselves. There was a close-up followed by a commercial break. When the show came back, the previous conversation was repeated. This practice got annoying for fans who were watching on streaming services. Are you crazy? Artema yelled after the repeated bit was over. We can do this. We've dealt with much bigger monsters than these, and this is just catch and release. As the sisters argued, the wizard in his camo elbowed his apprentice and they found something else to do on the main floor. As expected, the sisters decided to give it a try. The bulk of the episode involved the antics of the two sisters trying to lure out and cage these tiny dragons. The music was light and the shots presented the little dragons as cute instead of sinister. Morgana blasted light light underneath an uneven wall and a dozen little dragons in all different colors scattered everywhere. They both screamed and caught none of them. Next, Artema swept a broom handle back and forth through a hole in the flooring. Pocket dragons took flight in a thick swarm. She dropped the broom and it started flying around the room. Uh, let's say two. All right. The dragons clustered on the apprentice. His hat went flying, tufts of hair flew from his mullet, and he dropped out a shot. The camera cut to everyone's reactions. The next scene was a stand-up of the sisters. As Artema explained, Billy the apprentice was hurt, but he will recover. Our thoughts, prayers, and magic wishes are with him and his family. Morgana no nodded along with her most solemn expression. That would be the last time Billy ever appeared in the show. The scene cut to Artemis' house, where her sons and husband helped build elaborate traps using buckets, levers, uh, trap doors, and a few magic spells. Little Jack asked, can we keep one? Sure, Morgana said. No, absolutely not, Artemis spoke over her sister. What about Billy? That was a swarm, Morgana said. One would be fine. No, 
Jack pouted but went back to work without complaint. Morgana whispered, What color dragon do you want, Jack? Purple, he whispered back. No, Artema barked even louder. The show came back after the break to bucket traps filled up with pocket dragons. There had to be hundreds. The show left that thread for a while to show the sisters picking out tile and countertops. Uh, they were able to take out the wall but had to put in a new support beam. They chose rustic wood to match the decor of the house. There was a brief scene where the couple had to agree to put in more money. It was a little tense, but this sort of thing happened in almost every episode like clockwork. The renovation finished up quickly. The sisters cleaned up a couple curses they found lurking in the shadowed corners of expanded closets. The sisters took their buckets of pocket dragons to a preserve where scientists marveled over how this one catch might help save the species. The sisters were presented with a plaque in honor of their work. There was no mention of poor Billy. Then the audience watched the couple cry as they went through their renovation. As a twist, the couple decided they would move in themselves instead of flipping or renting this, this one. There were more cheers and hugs. As the credits started to flash on, on and off the screen, the sisters sat in Artemis' kitchen again, talking about how well that went. Uh, well, en well, enough for, uh, well enough for everyone except Billy, of course. Say, well... For everyone except Billy, of course. Okay. Jack walked through the frame and Morgana took a wrapped present out of the seat next to her. She glanced at the camera again. Artema reacted as if she had not seen the box come into her house. What is that? It's for Jack. His face brightened and he took the gift. What did you do? Morgana shrugged. Open it, Jack. He did. And a tiny purple dragon, a purple pocket dragon, popped out and into his arms where it licked his face. Jack cheered, cried, and hugged his aunt. The other boys ran into the kitchen and started jumping up and down. I'm going to kill you, Artema mouthed. Only the viewers watching with subtitles caught that bit. Morgana ignored it and asked, What are you going to name him, Jack? Sparky, he yelled without hesitation. The boys ran out back to play with their new pet, and the scene switched to a final view of Artema's house with the camera pulling back. The final few credits flashed across the screen, along with the warning not to handle dragons unless you are a professional. The sisters spoke in voiceover. I can't believe you did that. It'll be fine, Morgana said. They get bigger. As long as you housebreak them early, you'll be fine. You're always pulling stuff like this, and you love me for it. The sisters laughed off camera as the episode ended. The black bar across the bottom of the screen started to fill up white as it prepared to play the next episode, but a new screen image popped up in its place and asked, Are you still watching? 